Great party. Have you ever wondered how helium balloons, birthday candles, and a handful of nails are linked to the stars? Well, that's easy. Those are all things seen in superstar Brad Pitt's latest film, Flaming Iron Balloon. Yeah, right. But what if I told you that some of the same elements that make up this chocolate cake are the same elements that come from the stars in the sky? Don't believe me? Well, maybe it's time we got a little spaced out. So how do we know what stars are made of? It's not like we can just look on the back of a box for the ingredients. Since we can't reach the stars, because they're thousands of trillions of miles away, how can we really study them? Oh, oh, I know, I know. Since, since stars are really, really hot, and all things that are hot give off some sort of light or radiation, um, we can use the electromagnetic spectrum. I know, I know, I'm so good. So the electromagnetic spectrum is literally every type of radiation given off by a hot object, like a star. Different types of radiation waves indicate different star temperatures. Check out this chart. At the lower energy end of the spectrum, you see radio waves and microwaves. Those are the same kinds of waves that let you listen to your favorite radio station or cook popcorn in your microwave. At the really high energy end, you have X-rays and gamma rays. Now, the Earth's atmosphere keeps most of those rays out. And it's a good thing, or else we'd be fried. <laughs> but one of the waves does get through the atmosphere, and that's right here, visible light. And even though it's only a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum, it can tell us a lot about what makes up a star. But in order to understand the recipe of a star, we first have to know a little bit about the ingredients. It all has to do with elements. Elements make up literally everything. Table salt, bottled water, even your mom. Clean your room. Just as every person has unique fingerprints, every element has a unique spectral signature. And when we energize different elements, we get different kinds of light. So check this out. Each of these tubes is full of a gaseous element, helium, neon, and mercury. Now watch what happens when we pass electricity through them. Helium, a kind of purplish light. Neon, more red. And mercury, a blue kind of light. Different elements give off different colors of light. Now we've all seen what happens when you break up light in a prism. Well, you can do the same thing with light given off from different elements using a spectroscope. Spectroscope. Now, an instrument used to split light into measurable wavelengths. Right. So let's take a look at these elements. So even though helium really looks purple, we can see that it also has a little bit of yellow and red in it. And those colors are actually different wavelengths of the light given off by the element. Same with neon and mercury. This is because each element has its own unique arrangement of electrons in its atoms. Different sources of light appear differently through the spectroscope. For instance, your refrigerator light may look different than the spectrum of, say, candlelight, and even more different than the fluorescent light in your doctor's office. Dr. Kravitz, you have a visitor in the main lobby. <laughs> That's because each light source is made up of different elements energized in different ways. 
When you combine light spectra of different elements together, you get unique spectral combinations. And no two spectral combinations ever repeat. So what does that tell us about the stars? Stars give off light as well. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Now, when you look up at the stars with just your eyes, it may seem like they're all giving off the same white light. If you look at those same stars using a telescope, you'll see something different. Steve, move. Check that out. Those same white stars look blue and red close up. Their colors represent their different temperatures. The red stars are way hot, but the blue stars are even hotter, kind of like when you strike a match. The blue part of the flame is actually hotter than the red part. Now, if you could look closely at those stars with a spectroscope, it kind of looks like a rainbow with lines. It's actually a combination of hundreds of spectral lines. Scientists can determine what elements make up a star by analyzing the spectral lines. Now, let's put it all together. Think of the spectra of a star as a list of ingredients, and the elements as, well, ingredients. Each element has a specific spectrum, which is kind of like a barcode for each ingredient. Scientists use those barcodes to identify each element when they analyze the cosmic makeup of a star. They look at the patterns inside the spectrum as the ingredient list. That helps them determine which elements in which combinations make up a particular star. Mmm, a good cake. Since the stars are thousands of trillions of miles away, the only way that we can really learn about the elements they're composed of is by looking at the only part of the star that reaches us, light. Elements, stars, and chocolate cake. Now that's quantum mechanics in action. Stop it.